Hi, this is Peter Teuscher. I'm here with Toby Demker. Thanks for joining us for another podcast where we like to talk about all things personal development, professional development, and a little philosophy. We just pick a topic and see where the conversation takes us. So um, we hope you enjoy our conversation today. We normally start with some afterthoughts from our last episode because usually there's something that kind of pops into our heads. But uh, Toby, I I don't think you have any afterthoughts today because I certainly don't. (laughs) No, um, it feels like the mind is kind of preoccupied with uh, all the other stuff that's going on around in the world. And, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I haven't had any, maybe not, I shouldn't say have, I didn't have any time, but maybe not, not any energy really to reflect on, on, on that. So. Yeah, I guess I would point out that, you know, one of the reasons we, we, you know, we talked about beliefs last time, and for me, beliefs, you know, it's having consciously picking your beliefs and putting them into philosophy is really uh, important. And I think that what having a really f- structured philosophy does for you, it helps you when you encounter challenges, you know. So for me, I'm always, if um, if there's a really difficult choice for me to make, or I'm trying to sort something out, um, make sense of the world, I, I, I literally ask myself, what does my philosophy tell me about this? And mm. and so I think, you know, uh, we're going from one crisis into another, it seems like. Um, and, um, and and so I think, ha- you know, this is the time when having a really solid belief system really can support you and, and help you. So, um, mm. And yeah. I guess, I mean, looking at, at so many people's behaviors now, you can really see that, you know, this is a good, time to think about it but it also to act upon it and a lot of people are really doing that i mean that's if it's one positive thing is the thing about the, this this uh, crisis i guess it's that people uh, so many people are proactively taking action and and willing to support and help each other and i think that's a really that's a really beautiful thing and that that really think tells you about you know what what what's important for me what do i believe in uh, so you can see some of the positivities of really acting upon your beliefs and values and yeah, whatever it might be, your, your life philosophy. Yeah, absolutely. And I think living by your values and your philosophy is important. Um, I, I, some, I saw <clears throat> some, some friends talking about they were taking on some Ukrainian refugees and you mm. know that, that was their part. And I think looking at how you can make it a positive impact is very important rather than just, you know, um, being angry and like just really um, the and, and being angry is understandable uh, by all means. But uh, I'm just saying, you know, we get we get this default mode of, of fear response being reactionary. And obviously we're in a situation where we hope cooler heads will prevail um, and 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 people will f- will find a way through this without with the least amount of violence and bloodshed. So um so clearly, you know, there, there's no easy way out of the situation. And, and you know, really seeing things as black and white is, is not helpful because everything's got nuance. Mm. So, um, so yeah, I think, um, I think hopefully, you know, um, people will look at how can I make a, con- a positive contribution um, rather than looking at how can I aggressively uh, address my, my fears and, and which are totally understandable. But um, look, I, I'm... I don't have any solutions, but it's uh, it's concerning when we both live in 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 Europe and uh, and and something like this kind of is almost in your backyard, right? So, mm-hmm. um, Europe's a much smaller place than than you know where Canada, where I come from, and and for you in Sweden, you're you know you're also not that that far away mm-hmm. from it. So, so obviously you know the, there are there are some big concerns, but um, anyway, that's not what we want to talk about today. Um, hmm. You have a great topic for us, and um, yeah, I'm hoping uh, we can we can have an inspiring conversation to get people thinking about uh, you know what they want for the future. Yeah, and ourselves, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> yes, I, a topic the, the topic at hand is about intent or intention, and uh, I think it's. I chose it because it's something that it's uh, I've been working a lot with that personally lately, and I think it's really helpful for me. And also maybe a little bit of within, in this context of where we are right now with uh, crisis going on and around, and there's a lot of depressing news, and you know, how do we want to get by? 
And so this, I guess for me personally, this started with, I was in some, some workshop. I don't even remember where, um, but I was probably attending a workshop or, or co-facilitating co a workshop. And this, this question popped up as a check-in question, like at the start of the workshop. So what's your intention for the, for the day? And it really made me think, but first, what, 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 what does that mean? You know, what, what's an intention? Okay. Because we're, for example, we've been talking about purpose and objective setting and, and, and all of these kind of, kind of things. But so what's the difference with, with an intention? And, you know, the, at that time I probably just made something up and yeah, this is, this is going to be my intention for today to be proactive or whatever. Um, but then this, this question has really dawned upon me and now I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm very often, not every day, but almost every day when I, when I wake up early in the morning, I, I try to think about an intention for the day. Um, and I work a lot, lot with it with my son actually, because we, we chat about this in the morning. So what's your, what's your intention for today when he goes to school, etc. Um, and yesterday he, uh, he, he he i asked him so, so what's your going to what's your intention going to be for the day and he said well it, it, today is just going to be to be happy okay great um and then we had a conversation about that dur later during the night and to see you know well how happy were you what made you happy these kind of things and i think it's really interesting how your by setting an intention how it can um, how it can inspire your behaviors and your actions and you bring it into your consciousness to proactively um, behave in a certain way that is bringing your intent to life. So it's very, it's very focused on, on uh, behaviorism and, and, and action and, and also, also maybe helping you in your decision making during the day. So what do you want to focus on? How do I want to uh, appear uh, in this uh, situation? How do I want to be perceived by others in this situation? And by, by having that uh, consciousness, really bringing you the, your best self into, uh, in, into play. Um, and also, so I might be going on on a, on a, <laughs> on a run here, but it's also really about, um, we've been talking a lot about change uh, from, from different perspectives. And I think it's a really great way of looking at incremental change. So uh, a sustainable development of making small steps or small changes during a day-to-day -day basis where you every day focus on something that makes you better. And it, you uh, if you're having a your your purpose in in mind or a, or a, or a sort of grand grander vision in mind, your intention is pull, pulling you closer to that every day. But it doesn't have to be the same thing every day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, it can be that today this is really important to me. This is really what I what I want to focus on. Or I've been inspired by something else that that makes me want to um, act in a certain way. So. By saying that, to to commit to an intention on a day-to-day -day basis, I think it's really good for the sustainable development for incremental change, where you take small steps every day. Um, yeah, I, I I totally agree, and I I think that there's a there's a real power in intention, and you know we we talk about uh, or you know I I work with people in. Uh, in the coaching side of things, when we look at you know what beliefs have you internalized, what and 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 the same goes for intention. When intention is for me, you know, getting real clarity about you know why you're doing something, what you want to achieve, um, and and really internalizing that, right? So that then the sort of intuitive responses, the automatic kind of choices you make, the impulses you have will be from that what you've internalized as your intention. So I think that is that is super important. And I, I think the other element that I'd like to get today is under, you know, the empathy side of things where trying to understand what other people's intentions are, even if their words and behaviors aren't really, you know, um, displaying that. So mm -hmm. um, being careful about um, the assumptions you make and the judgments that you make. So so yeah, but I think I think the power of intention is a big one for this topic, um, and you know there's even been research done on on people who just um, 
you know, they'll, they'll set a goal or whatever, but they won't be clear about their intention. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, the, you know, they had three groups and, um, and the, the group that was the most successful was not just the one that set a goal, but the, the one that kind of made this statement of, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do this, um, and I'm going to do it on by this time, uh, you know, this, here's what I'm going to do by this time on this day. Um, and even adding an element of, you know, why, you know, my purpose, mm. um, but not necessarily that those three elements were the, the big pieces. And, and those were the most successful out of the three groups, the ones who were just spontaneous are the ones who set a goal, but didn't really create a, a clear intention of what they were trying to achieve. But mm. the third group that really was clear about the intention of what they were trying to achieve and, and within a time frame, they were the most successful. And mm. so, the, you know, adding, so that there's this, um, it's called implementation, implementation intention. So it's this real process of, um, not only here's what I want, but you know, it's, it's kind of the difference between dreams and goals, right? Dreams are mm. out there and, you know, maybe I'll do this one day and goals are, you know, all about having these, um, smart, smart goals, smart objectives, but, mm. you know, being, being specific and, you know, giving a, a time frame and so on. And so, for me, that's part of intentionality, like being very intentional in in the way you approach things. And mm. I, I think that uh, Joe Dispenza is very, you know, um, very famous for, for his process of he doesn't get out of bed until he, his intentions oh, yeah. for the days, are, the day is absolutely clear. You know, he mm. visualizes it, he makes it very clear for himself. And so he uses the power of intention, you know, to another level. Uh, and he believes that can change your health and your outcomes but uh, but intention in many ways is is really important and and i think maybe the first step you know we can talk about you know understanding other people but the first first step is looking at you know your own intention and what you're mm -hmm. trying to achieve because sometimes it's not even clear to us you know we have these strategies that we have for getting somewhere and um, and you know, maybe we'll have an, a, an emotional response. And, you know, I approach these things systemically. So maybe mm -hmm. there's a, there's in our inner system, there's an, a need that we have that we're trying to achieve that we're not even aware of. Mm -hmm. And our intention in certain actions um, and responses to things may be driven by this, this need that we have on, on a level that we're not even aware of. So, mm -hmm. so understanding yourself, I think, is the, is a really important step in this process of uh, intentionality. And then, as I always say, awareness allows change. So bringing it to the surface, understanding what it, you know, getting clear about what you really want and then putting that as your focus. And I think that's a great way to get what you want in life and to be fulfilled and to be living by your values, mm -hmm. uh, just understanding what your intentions are and, and then making those clear for others, um, sharing your vision, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that can be applied in people's personal lives. It can make for healthier relationships when you're clear about your intentions and it can make um, for a really successful professional life too, right? Mm. So, <clears throat> because then you attract the people to you that that are on board with that intention. You know, it's mm. not just here's a goal, but here's our intention behind it. Here's what we're, you know, here's the the results we're trying to get out of achieving this goal. So I think yeah. all of those things kind of come under that intention umbrella. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if we if we imagine ourselves stepping into a room uh, with uh, that is uh, it's full of people and uh, we don't really know what's going on there, we don't know who's in there, and if you're walking in there without any kind of intention and just you know very acting, just see what happens. I mean, that's fine. Uh, it might be might be a, a great great situation. You might get get a lot from it. Um, but for me personally, I've been in that situation where I really wish, well, when I look back at it, I really wish that I had an intention. You know? So how am I going up, going to approach this? Uh, maybe it's because I'm an introvert. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, for, for me to go into a room and really connect with people and engage in a conversation, it takes, it takes a little bit of an in, in, intention setting. So, okay, now I'm going to proactively do something. But if I have, if I've set an intention already, so now I'm going to be, let's, let's just uh, choose a random example that, okay, now I'm going to go into this room and I'm going to, I'm going to be curious. That's gonna, I'm going to be curious on others and see what people are talking about, see what's happening. Then you go in there with that, 
not not necessarily a purpose. Uh, it might be related to a pur purpose, but an intention to proactively behave in a certain way and, and to maybe to learn something. And that's going to put that it put myself in in a totally different situation and it it becomes so much more enjoyable and then i can reflect back on it and like well what did i do that was demonstrating that this uh, curiosity for instance and i might be that i I asked, I asked more questions or, uh, you know, I, I started, uh, got engaged in a conversation that I've never had before or whatever. Yeah. And then realize when, so that what I'm saying is that it takes an intention setting is great when you're, especially when maybe when you're entering a situation that you haven't been in before, which we are more and more doing in, in, in our day to day lives, I guess. Uh, but also the reflection part of it. So how did that go and see what can I, what did I learn from this? Well, how, how, how did I succeed with my, my intention to what degree? Um, what could I do more? And in that sense, it, it's also it also supports that uh, that incremental development that I was talking about. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think that um, when you're going into a situation like that, it's important to, to make a distinction between expectations and intentions. Right. So mm. so people will go in and I people will con confuse the two, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you have an, an, an intention and it's, it's really you're driving that, uh, but you may go into a situation with an expectation and um, maybe it's an expectation of yourself, but it's almost like expectations are, um, you, you know, you're less in control of those, whereas the intention is, you know, is, is really helping focus, you know, your, um, your energy and your, you uh, your decision making your choices to to pursue something and uh, to to make it uh, manifest to make it uh, to to make it happen and so um you know w you know you can it, it probably looks like expectation and intention are obviously two very different things but sometimes people will have an expectation and mm. make that their intention and i think it's important to make that distinction even though yeah. i probably didn't describe it very well just now <laughs> No, that's great. I, I I I agree that it's so important to to distinguish between the two because to say one is you're expecting a result, but it, it it's not really depending on on your behavior and your actions. But with your intention, it's really much more proactive and think about well, what can I do to uh, yeah to to put things into play. So yeah, I I really like that distinction. I think it's really important. Yeah. And when you were first, uh, when you su suggested the this topic, um, I was also thinking about the, you know, the grow model for, <clears throat> for coaching, mm -hmm. where we, you know, we, look, we set a goal, look at the reality, the current situation, then look at options. And then the final step in that is, you know, the way forward, what will mm -hmm. I do, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I think that step is all about, you know, now you've, You've clarified everything. Now you set your intention, right? Mm. And I think that helps make that distinction between just setting a goal and creating an intention. Um, just like I was talking about when we talked about when I said the implementation uh, <clears throat> implementation intention, um, w where it's you're very clear not just what you want, but but also how you're going to do it, or if not how. Um, you know when you're going to start when you're going to finish when you're what you're going to attempt to do so you're it doesn't have to be the big overarching goal it can be you know this is my intention is it's it's just like if you if you say well i want to lose some weight so my intention for today is i'm going to take a walk i'm going to uh, I'm going to avoid the bakery with the sweets that I love, <laughs> you know, it, but really setting those intentions for yourself. Um, mm -hmm. So it, like you say, it can be a daily thing. So you get up in the morning, my intention today, like, you know, I think when we first, uh, before we started recording, we talked about, well, <laughs> I think part of our intention is to be, you know, to be more positive because, mm -hmm. you know, we've, um, with, with the events of the last two years and, the, and certainly the current events that are happening, um, it, it's, you would understand and all the bad news that's all around us. Uh, mm. it, it, it's understandable to, you know, lose some of the positivity. And so mm. I think it does take some intentionality if you want to stay, 
you know, uh, clear minded and positive and, and find some good in the, you know, in, in what you could contribute. Mm. I think having consciously looking for that intention is, uh, is an important step. And I think it's a good, you know, we've talked before about having, um, morning routines and, mm. um, and, and I, you know, I, I certainly have mine, but I've kind of forgotten about the, I, I haven't implemented regularly this setting an intention for myself. And I think yeah. it's a good reminder. So I'm glad you've picked it as a topic today. Yeah, I agree. Well, another, what I think is a great benefit of this is that it's not so overwhelming. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're, if you succeed with it or not, it's really up to you and you never know what's going to happen during the day. So, you know, sometimes you have to also have to be a bit forgiving to yourself that, oh, I didn't, I didn't think about my intention a hundred percent of the time of the day. That's not how it works. Right. But, in in a certain situation say like um uh, for example i think it's great when going into a meeting so okay what's my intention for this meeting okay and then it 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 sets you up for for whatever the intention is if it's about yeah listening being proactive or asking questions or really being attentive or taking notes or whatever it is um so just just bringing it into the span of attention, uh, you can't think about it all the time. And if you don't, that's fine. And if you, if something really terrible happens or something unexpected happens, so, so you don't fulfill that intention during the day, that's fine. I mean, you it's uh, you, you have another shot tomorrow, <laughs> and that's it, right? And it can be something different, uh, right? It doesn't have to be the same intention every day. Um, I heard a, a really wonderful. Uh, uh, a story about someone who, um, I think it's from a TED talk actually that, that I saw a while ago. Uh, but it is this woman who, uh, she, I think she had a lot of diseases as a child and she was really severely overweight. I mean, really, really overweight. I mean, say uh, three, 400 pounds or something like that. Mm. And, um, she couldn't figure out how to how to lose weight and it was part medical condition part uh, maybe uh, habitual conditions um but she started working with uh, intention setting and just committing to one thing every day and as you said one one day was i think you mentioned not going to the bakery or eating an apple or 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 going for for a walk or wh whatever it is and over the over the the years, she you know she lost it all. Uh, she's uh, I don't remember the exact number of the uh, of the weight, but down to you know for her size, uh, a sort of a normal distribution. Um, and I and and it doesn't make it so overwhelming that oh now I have to go on a diet and now I have to commit to this thirty day plan. It's you're doing something small every day, and over the long time, it's it's going to have a, a positive impact on. Yeah, that's reflected in, uh, I think it's Lao Tzu who said, you know, journey of a thousand miles begins with one yeah. step or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, no, I, I totally agree with you. And, and I, I think, again, there's the difference between intention and expectations, because there's I find that with expectations, there's a, a lot of judgment, there can be disappointment and so on. But with intention, it's like, well, that was my intention. I didn't quite get there. I can try again tomorrow. I think there's there's a, a more forgiving kind of energy around the word and um, a, around what you're trying to achieve. Um, and, and I agree because, as we said, you know, there's a goal that you're trying to get to and your intention today could be just one tiny piece of that goal. And, mm -hmm. and so um, I, I think that's exactly the, the, the point of... Um, making intention not just this this big overarching thing, but something that you do on a regular basis, like you say, going into a meeting, um, or I think it's it's such a great tool for incremental change because when you think about oh I remember that argument that I had and I you know I lost my cool and my intention for this time when I go into this discussion that you know um, and and you just kind of focus on one thing. Um, and and uh, not so much strategizing, but really uh, j just attempting to learn a new tool, learn a new skill, change a habit um, in one small step. And I think the the intention is actually the first step in making those changes, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's like a, it's setting the foundation for for whatever changes or whatever actions it might be. So yeah, I mean, as an example, I, I think it was. Um, 
I forgot what day, but earlier this week I had, I choose the, the theme of being, being proactive. Um, and it made me, I don't know if, I mean, in some, in some way it made me, or it supported me to make a lot more phone calls during the day than I usually do. So I connected with a lot of people that I haven't talked to for a long time. I, I, yeah, just was more proactive in being earlier and doing stuff and made me more productive. And, and then looking back at that during uh, then before I went to bed, so like, okay, I did this and this and this and this. And it's a really, it's a great sense of achievement as well that, okay, I actually managed to, to, um, to yeah, behave in this way today. And it uh, gained, it, it, it's, uh, it gave me a lot of opportunities and successes and, um, yeah, and I think it's you know having having that intent, carrying that intention with you throughout the day, it it it, it fosters so many things. Uh, uh, you know, um, it creates a, a level of presence and awareness. Um, it, it just helps in reflection. Um, you know, we we don't just we're less automated because you know you 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 a lot of us when you think about we are habitual creatures you know the, you, there there are different views on this but but um as you get older you have more and more habits and they say you know 85 90% of of our adult behavior is is uh, habituated so it's just done unconsciously mm. and and i think creating these intentions creates a higher level of aware awareness and it, and then as you reflect as you carry that intention with you through the day it encourages you to reflect and and go well you know how how am i doing with my intention um mm. i think it really encourages that kind of behavior and really you know we need a lot more reflection self-reflection in the world and and in order to have more understanding of ourselves and of other people and situations so mm. um i think it, yeah intention is a real big driver for that yeah and i just realized as well that in, in some ways i guess it also connects very well with with intrinsic motivation and or self-determination theory you know that you it's nothing that you have to do. It's something that you want to do. It's it's your own will to do something that is bringing this forward. So nobody's telling you what your intention should be. It comes totally hundred exactly. percent from from in, inside yourself, and I think that that's one of the reasons why it's so powerful. You know, that it's something that you choose to do. It's your call. Nobody's judging it, uh, and hopefully not even yourself. <laughs> uh, and it's it brings on this will to to move forward. So I think yeah, I think it's wonderful. Yeah, and it, and it, like I say, it, it creates a better understanding of yourself and of other people, because mm. you can look at the results of a given day or a week or whatever, and you can go well. Here's here's what happened, but here's what my intention was, and you can look at. Um, the gap between those two and you can start to look at okay you know where did things go off track for me and and you can it you know you can reflect on um, okay well next time so so maybe the intention was too broad and maybe you can go well um, you know next time I'm gonna I see where things got off track and so my intention next time will be to you know, break it down into even smaller steps and to go, okay, well, next time I'm only going to, I'm going to try it with, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, you know, when I, when I find myself having an emotional reaction, I'm going to see it, you know, uh, I, I, I now recognize where it comes. So I, I got to be a step ahead of it and I start breathing and I start being more self-aware or whatever, whatever the issue is that you're trying to tackle or the result that you're not happy with, you know, recognizing where, the, the choice got you off track that you made. And, and I think that is, you know, that, that is uh, part of the major benefit of, of clear intention setting. Yeah. Yeah. I really like that, that empathetic perspective that you brought into the beginning as well to yeah. really try to understand, you know, what is the other person's intention in this situation? Um, and uh, I mean, to, First of all, for, to to show some empathy, why are people uh, reacting or behaving in 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 a way that they're doing? Um, and perhaps uh, you know the the intention is uh, isn't there, but also this n notion of uh, I think I started off talking about uh, this as a as a check in exercise, you know, where you share your intention, 
but it's so in that in that sense it's really also it's also really important and and valuable to understand what other people are setting uh, what kind of intentions they're setting for themselves so we can understand the reason why people are behaving in a certain way um and it it i think it um it creates a lot of a lot more trust a lot a lot more cohesiveness in 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 a group and a lot more empathy as well to understand yeah okay what's going on this in this person's um yeah life right now yeah i think it creates empathy for yourself when you when you um are judging yourself and being hard on yourself for the results um you know how often does that work i i'm mm. and uh, this is coming from someone with a very well-developed inner critic um and I know, and i know it and i continue to work on it but i i know that 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 um inner criticism uh, of the results doesn't help the berating yourself because you you know you screwed up again or whatever i think um you know if i if i can then shift the mindset and and my state in order to to be reflective and, and aware enough to say well my intention was this and now I recognize, you know, um, that I wasn't present enough. Uh, I wasn't aware enough. I, you know, and and so, so next time, here's what I could change. Like, you know, understanding the the again the difference from where you got to and where your intention was. So being em empathetic with yourself, but then <clears throat> when it comes to empathy for others, not not making assumptions or jumping to conclusions. I think. Mm -hmm that's a big one we we often think we know other people's intentions and quite often we're wrong sometimes we're right um mm -hmm. sometimes intuitively we get a sense for things and i i don't want to discourage anyone from you know trusting their gut and uh, and and seeing and and kind of um, um getting a sense for you know what what's happening in a in a personal dynamic but but i i do think we often jump to conclusions and i remember I remember years ago uh, listening to Sam Harris talk about you know he he's a you know he's a neurobiologist and he's a philosopher but he often talks about <clears throat> politics and so on and you know he he was talking about it, intention matters and I agree intention does matter but he he was making in, in assumptions about who the good guys were and what their intentions were and who the bad guys are and what mm -hmm. their intentions are mm -hmm. and so he assumed to know. And and I think that's where we make a lot of um, mistakes, and and that's where we we, you know, we, you see a lot of this in where we <clears throat> we create the other, we create the out groups, um, mm -hmm. because we we observe behaviors and actions, and we don't ask ourselves what was their intention. We assume their intention was bad, <laughs> was something, you know, and mm -hmm. and um, I think, you know, m maybe not if you're. Uh, uh, if you're going on to use car lot or if you're going to, but for the most part, I encourage people to assume good intentions in mm -hmm. the workplace, in your personal relationships, mm -hmm. assume good intentions, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that person is not necessarily executing, uh, the right behaviors or strategies in order to achieve their intention, but assume a good intention. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that you'll, you'll have much more harmonious relationships, uh, and, and a, even whether it's a workplace or in, in, in your personal life. And, um, and that there are always going to be people who will take advantage of that. Uh, and mm. I think, you know, you'll, you know, as you become more self-aware, you'll be able to sense check those situations better. But if we find ourselves always jumping conclusions about other people's intentions and assuming they're wrong and mm. being very fear led, fear driven, then you're going to have more conflicts and more frustration, I think. Um, mm. At least that's my philosophy. Yeah, yeah that that made me think about, uh, and maybe I'm putting myself in victim here mode here now. But it, it also makes me reflect on how I can, you know, view others. Uh, but but so my my the situation is that I'm thinking about thing times where I've been misunderstood or my intentions have been misunderstood yep. and people are thinking of me as 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 doing something bad or being rude or a bad guy 
and without at all that being the intention, but that's how I came across in a certain situation. And I, I wish that I could, as I said, I wish that I could go in with it, there with a clear intent, but of course also that others could have more empathy to where I was coming from, what was going on in that situation. Uh, but of course I have to think about how, because I do that as well. I make assumptions and, and judgments about others every single day, you know, like, and how, yeah, how much empathy do I have for, for other people and their intentions and what's going on? I mean, it might be, let's t take an example that you know, if someone has uh, forgotten their glasses at home or not seeing well and you're saying hi to them and they just give you give you give you a blank or whatever and they, you, your assumption is that they are being rude or they're they're not respecting you or whatever but it might just be, be that yeah they're they're not seeing very well today or <laughs> I, I that has happened you know so that's why i'm bringing it up yeah and i think in both cases um whether it's uh your own Intent, like think about um, if you'd been really clear about your intention going into that situation, would people have um, misinterpreted? What are the chances as high that people would have misinterpreted your in intention? Right. Well, That's, so uh, yeah. So for for the examples that I'm thinking about, it depends. Uh, and some sometimes it wouldn't have mattered, mm. uh, but sometimes it really would have made a difference. If I was clear with my intent, I would behave in a, in a different way. Uh, yeah, just uh, minimizing the risk for those kind of be, uh, misunderstandings. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and I again, that's where. <clears throat> that's where it can help you to avoid those kind of, right? We, it can help all of us mm. uh, when we're going into situations. You, you can't always anticipate when a conflict's going to arise. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, but the more I think you set intentions for yourself with any interaction that you go into, especially those where you think they could be uh, difficult, um, you, you know, intention setting is, is really important. Um, and, and I think before, also before we have an emotional reaction, um, we're triggered by something because a lot of times people will say something and it's all about us. It's not about them. The mm -hmm. emotional response, it, it, you know, being responsible for your own emotional uh, state is a, is an important one to remember when you, especially when you talk about, <clears throat> you know, being being a victim. Mm. That we, when we take offense and we, you know, it, it, people will be provocative. But at the end of the day, they do not have control of us, and mm. so we we give a lot of responsibility to um, to the way we feel, the way you know, the way we've responded to something. We put that on someone else, and at the end of the day, the only one who can control that is us, mm. right? Uh, and so, that, and that's not a license for people to be, you know, unkind or belligerent to each other uh, because you know, well, if you you react poorly to that, it's your, you know, that, that's that's not what I'm saying. But I, I think. If you if you want to be um, you know if you, if you want to maintain a happy calm you know balanced uh, emotional state you you have far more control of that than than if you than than if you're going to allow yourself to respond to every negative trigger that comes your way so mm -hmm. um, so I'm probably getting a little off track there but I think when you do observe people having negative behavior, I mean, we, we try and do this with, with kids, right? We'll, we'll go, oh, you know, um, we'll, we'll rationalize their state while they, they need a nap or whatever. But at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's hard. You have to try and interpret what, uh, especially if a child's not in a, in a state or even at a level of development that they can clearly um, communicate what they want, right? We, mm -hmm. we try harder to understand their intentions. When, when the communication's not there, um, we try at least to, to understand the intentions. Whereas mm. when you're having a dialogue with people and you, you, you just take what they say uh, at face value mm. and, and you don't think about, well, what, what are they trying to get at here? What, what could their intention be? I think that's a really helpful thing, even strategically. Like y even if you're having a friendly conversation and it's a negotiation, I mean, this is something that's really valuable in negotiations is to understand, yeah, okay, what's that. their intention here, right? Mm -hmm. to, to try and make sure that you're also negotiating in your best interest. Um, mm -hmm. I think it, it has so many applications and so many uses. Yeah. Yeah. And I also thought about that example in a negotiation to be really, really clear about, okay, what is your intention? Of course, I mean, you know, you, everybody know you should have a, 
you know, I, uh, uh, at the bottom line or your offer line and, and the, the area in between, but re, but more on a behavioral level, how do you intend to go into this uh, this negotiation? Um, you know, because it's so important to be practically listening and, and really try to understand the other person um, instead of just locking yourself into your own corner, right? So, yeah, because we... Yeah, because we that situation, it's it's uh, it's maybe particularly valuable to to think about your intention, especially in communication, especially mm-hmm. in these um, in these interactions and these human dynamics that we experience, because you find yourself very quickly, um, you, you know, telling yourself this story. Uh, about the other person, right? The inner mm-hmm. narrator will start to say, oh, they probably want it. And, and, and that may not be, you know, that, that's your story. That's your story that you're projecting on them a lot of times. Um, and so it's important to question that because how often do you, we don't often question the inner narrator that we have that's telling us the story about this internal story about what we're hearing and experiencing outside. Mm. And so when we jump to conclusions of what, what people's intentions are, I mean, even we, we, you can see it in, in extreme cases in prejudice and racism, right? So you, you have, um, you know, you, you, see, you make assumptions about somebody that's, that's, uh, approaching you on the street um, about what their intention could be. And a lot of these things are fear-driven, right? So it, it, there's a wide scope of, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of different situations where these these things apply. And and as you go through life, and maybe that's a good exercise for people today, as you as you go through your day to um, to start going, ah, I wonder what their intention is. And, and, and like, and I, this can go down a rabbit hole because if you're if you're uh, if you're at, if you um, it's important to distinguish between um, knowing intentions when it matters and then and trying to think about in so I take that back it's not a good exercise to do <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing when we do these spontaneous things sometimes the ideas aren't good ones uh, and and and, uh, and I've and I've already let them out of the bag um, but I I think uh, when it Sorry, you can put them back. That's <laughs> can you edit this? No, we, we, that's why we do this thing spontaneously. Now, I think uh, there is there's probably uh, thinking about it more now. That's pr- there's probably a good line to be drawn because if you overanalyze people's intentions, it can mm-hmm. be you know it, it, it can be overwhelming. Um, if and and this is this is the thing where the classic kind of conversation uh, in a relationship where it's. Um, where where you'll say something with good intentions and and oh so do you mean that is that what you're trying to say mm. about me and and you, mm. like you'll make a compliment a compliment and um uh, and, you know the, you know those 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 genes are very slimming on you are, wh- are you saying that otherwise I look fat you know <laughs> it, 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 these kind of things where you start to dig into what could the intention be behind these words that are actually meant fairly innocently yeah. I think you can go well, overboard. Yeah, and it, uh, so I think it's really important to emphasize this, and I think we mentioned it already previously that you know there are not to, the intention is not to be judged no, in exactly. any way, uh, not for ourselves, but also definitely not for others. You know that uh, they have a bad intention. Uh, that's it's not it's not for our, us us to judge, yeah. uh, but to creating some awareness about what the intention might be. That uh, might be a little bit more of a or hopefully a lot more constructive. Yeah, conversation or communication that's going on. Yeah, and, and in my philosophy, and <clears throat> this guides me through through life really well. I, I look at everything, and, and it, it may be oversimplified, but I, I look at everything <clears throat> as this. Uh, actually, it's um, the, the the ancient pre-Socratic philosopher Empedocles. He had this view of the world uh, where you know the, the the all the all the forces of the world are are um, are all behind. Um, uh, is all this interaction between love and strife, right? He had mm. these two energies that, that was kind of what dr- drove uh, all these interactions. And, and, and for me, I, I've just replaced strife. And I mean, it's a translation from the ancient Greek anyway, but I've, trans- I've, 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 I've uh, inserted fear there. So, so in my philosophy, if I look at, you know, everything's uh, this dichotomy between love and fear. And so my... Uh, I, I ask myself, you know, is this is this uh, is this choice that I'm making? Is this intention 
a fear driven or is it love driven right so yeah. and and so a lot of a lot of our actions are fear driven right and so yeah. um so when i when i ask my own and ask about my own intentions um i you know i i i can ask myself is this fear driven but if someone's being angry or they're being abusive or something and i'm trying to understand them uh, you know and trying to understand their intention I recognizing like it, it's almost disarming for me to go, well, actually, they're just afraid rather than, wow, that what, what an idiot. What it like? The, why mm -hmm. is that person such an angry person? Mm -hmm. um, if I can break it down and go to the simplest form and uh, well, it's just a form of fear. They're just mm -hmm. afraid. And their intention is maybe, <clears throat> you know, they they. Um, you know, when, when you find some, when you see someone that's really arrogant and you, and you go, well, actually, they're probably really insecure. So that's fear. Mm -hmm. And so their intention is to, to, you know, to create more, to, to create kind of a, a version of themselves that, that makes them feel more secure. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, in the, in those situations, obviously are, we can, I, I'm just assuming here that these people, they're not, they're not aware of their intentions no. or their actions no, or exactly. their behaviors not, or how they're being perceived. So <clears throat> that's also the, one of the reasons that why this is important to bringing it into the span of attention to think about this. How am I? And, and as we see, it goes from, from two different perspectives, from my own perspective, how can I, you know, act in this situation, but also how am I perceived? And if in, in this collaboration kind of situation, they're equally important, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I think th there you can ask yourself a good question um, when, you're ha when you have a negative response to something or you, um, you know, you can ask yourself, are, th does the other person understand my intention mm. and how, or how can I better convey my intention, right? Um, and, and in order to do that, you have to be clear, clear about your intention in the first place. Yeah. So, um, and it also, I mean, it goes down with trust as well that, you know, you might have this intention, but the other person might not trust that you have that intention. So absolutely. what do, what do you have to do about that? Yeah. I mean, in certain situations you can, you can try and, uh, talk to your blue in the face and if there's not trust there, yeah. they, they won't accept your, your intention. And, and sometimes the harder you try and reinforce what your intention is, the more, the the more um, the doubt there is in the other person, you yeah. know, uh, the, the there less credible you seem to be. Going on here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, if you're if you if you already have a um, if you already sense that someone doesn't trust you, then trying to convince them of your intention is not going to help. First, you have to come back to how can I find a uh, level of trust with this person how can i mm. find you know um common ground before i go go uh convincing them right because mm. uh, it's it's a visceral thing it's people need to um if they don't trust you they're they're not going to trust your intentions mm. um so it's i mean in most cases i think if someone is is calm and rational and and uh, thinking, okay, well, I can appreciate what that, I don't really trust that person, but I see their strategy and I think I know what their intention is. Um, you know, there, there are ways, but when things get emotional, it's really difficult to assess, you know, what, what another person's intentions are. So that's why going in with a level of awareness is really important. Um, mm. So, I mean, it all kind of points back to that self-reflection, self-awareness, mm. um, and, and just being really clear. Mm. Yeah, and I'm, I mean, bringing it back to the situation where we are today, I think a lot of the cause of, uh, you know, suffering and, and uh, what just the, the chaotic situation is we're in, these, uh, what is the, what's the intention of Putin? What does, what does he want? Uh, what is the, yeah, what's the intention there? If that's very, very unclear, it's just really, really unsettling. Yeah, and people make a, a lot of assumptions and, um, mm. and I think it's important. Uh, look, I, I don't, I find it a difficult situation uh, to understand and I, you know, I I'm I like to be a student of human nature and and human dynamics, and and I also try and inform myself in terms of geopolitics. I don't just watch one news source. I try and be informed from multiple sources, mm -hmm. and it's very complex. It's very and and I think making assumptions about you know it's just a simple case of good and evil uh, that mm -hmm. doesn't it, that doesn't help you understand the situation any better. Um, 
And so, yeah, uh, and, and, you know, recognizing that, you know, a government's intentions aren't the same as, as its people's intentions. So mm-hmm. we often associate, you know, people with a certain nationality and, and then blame them for their government's, uh, um, you, know, ha- you know, things that they're, they're doing wrong or choices or, or things that they, um, that they sort of uh, uh, project out to the world. And I think that's important because, you know, I, I have um, critical things to say about, uh, about um, a certain country's foreign pos- policy, but that doesn't mean that, that I, and I know many people who are citizens of that country Mm-hmm. Who, are, who are amazing people and who have really great intentions, who do good yeah, things course. in the world, right? So, yeah. so I think um, you know making that distinction, and and I think also understanding that you know I think intention is a good thing to think about uh, in everything you expose yourself to. So, with the news, is there intention just to inform me, or is there a narrative that they're pushing, mm-hmm. right? Um, things that you're reading, what, what are the biases of the people and what are their intentions? I think it, it can really help you steer through life, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that's why when you look at different news stations, you get, you know, different versions of a story. Um, and you, you listen to different experts and sometimes they're just telling their, uh, um, their opinion, but sometimes they have an intention. They have a, you know, they have a, um, a narrative that they're trying to convey and they have certain um, objectives that tr- they're, they're trying to achieve. And so mm-hmm. I think um, intention is a, important there too. And, mm-hmm. and I, I don't think anyone um, knows a hundred percent what, uh, what the intentions are, and that's probably a scary thing, right? Yeah. Um, it can be a really scary thing to not understand what what someone's intentions are. Um, sorry, so so on a geopolitical uh, level or on an individual level, if you mm-hmm. you know if you're in a difficult situation, you're confronted by someone and you don't know what their intentions are. Maybe you're in a foreign country, or maybe not. Um, uh, those are scary situations. And mm. so I, you know, I empathize with people who are feeling very, really scared at the moment. And yeah, um, yeah. so um, and just projecting into the future, if anyone's listening to this, we are talking about the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Yeah. <laughs> um, because, you know, who knows if someone were to listen to this in a year's time, what, what were they talking about again? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I think, uh, th- th- yeah, that, that's where I would, I would um, caution around jumping to conclusions about intentions, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you make comparisons to, you know, previous crazy uh, leaders who waged war against the world, (laughs) it's not helpful because, Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, they're not, they're not the same and they're, you don't know what the intentions are at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, So, and let's hope it's not just a, a crazy, I don't care, I'm going to destroy the world. Yeah. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm really hoping people, <clears throat> cooler heads will prevail, and I'm, I'm hoping that um, we have leaders with enough um, intelligence to, to, to recognize to, and enough foresight to see where, where things could lead. Mm-hmm. Um, because at the end of the day, you know, uh, with war, it's, it's the everyday people that suffer. Um, and, uh, and, and we need less suffering in the world, in my view. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone will agree with me on that one. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, anyway, before uh, we get off on too much of a ta- tangent, anything else you want to wrap up with, uh, on intention? Well, I mean, just reflecting on the conversation, it really highlights how, how it can be important, valuable, uh, on an individual level, but also on a very grander scale. I mean, if we're talking geopolitics and, and we have a better understanding of each other's intentions, you know, things are going to be a lot more, more easier, I think. Yeah. So, But it's about, I mean, what we can do is, first of all, just think about what are our intentions in our day-to-day life. So I think it's a really... As I said, for me, this is kind of personal because I work a lot with it and I think it's really beneficial, it's helpful, uh, and it's simple, it's easy, uh, and it's easy to track and it's forgiving and it's non-judgmental. So I, I think it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a really, really helpful little tool to have. Um, I mean, because I also I think we, we talk about so many different topics and different ways to help each other and help uh, ourselves in different ways. 
and I think very often it can be overwhelming, you know, oh, I have to have to do yoga, I have to run, I have to meditate, I have to give feedback, I have to receive, you know, there's so many things to have, have to do. But finding something that works for you, um, I think that's really great. And for me, this is really one of them too. Uh, a simple tool to, that you can utilize frequently. Yeah, it's a, it, actually, that's a good reminder because sometimes I ask myself, you know, I, I could... Um, you know, I, I could make my living in, in simple ways and uh, I could be just satisfied. And, and then I ask myself, well, why do I want to do all this writing and podcasting and, and all these other things um, when I could be, you know, have a perfect. And then, and then that's a good time to remember, well, what my intention is. You know, we, our very first podcast was about purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think um, when, I, when I remember what my in, intention is and, and what I want to be trying to do to, to help people on their, um, on their personal development journey, I think that that helps me as well, that, that that intention is there. It helps remind me, you know, why it is that I do what I do and, and, um, and what motivates me. So, um, so, yeah, I guess just to kind of summarize you know, we talked a lot today about the, we started with the, talking about the power of intention and that power of intention is very, very strong. If you can start your day w- with a clear intention or, or any kind of um, a situation you're going into with a clear intention, you'll be better off. I think we both agree on that. Um, and then learning to, as part of your goal setting um, process to the, this implementation um, intention. So, um, so to be clear about not only what you want, but how you're going to achieve it. Um, and, uh, and then the empathy piece where we talked about how, um, you know, understanding your intentions, but also those of under, uh, others and not jumping to conclusions and not making assumptions. I think that, that kind of wraps up our message for the day. Hey, mm-hmm. yeah, I reckon it does. Good. Okay, good. So, um, yeah, I would encourage everyone to be clear on their own intentions and uh, be um, not so judgmental with when when assuming others' uh, intentions, and I think we'll all be uh, a lot better off. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well we'll re- we'll leave it at that. I hope that was beneficial for people listening. Uh, I, I, ho- I really hope that gave everyone some food for thought because uh, intentions is a really important one for your own life and also for the way you see the world and the way you see others. So. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. Toby, thanks for a, a great topic suggestion and, and for a great yeah. conversation today. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Talk mm-hmm. to you soon. Cheers.